Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Red Dead Redemption. And we are still here at Ridgewood Farms where we ended the last episode. And it looks like Wes Dickens has another quest nearby. We might as well go ahead and get this out of the way. And is that him right there? Howdy. Yeah, he's sitting there having a smoke. Liars, cheats, and other proud Americans. Yeah? Oh no, this is the... the race. Oh, Mr. Marston! How are you, sir? I'm alright. I met up with your friend, Seth. Oh, <laughs> Seth of the Dead. <laughs> yes, <laughs> interesting fellow. <laughs> you don't meet many men these days with the moral fortitude to cut straight to the chase like that, do you? <laughs> Thankfully not, Mr. West Dickens. Yes, uh, contemporary society is remarkably harsh on professional exhumers. But did you know that in ancient Egypt, it was an art form valued more highly than literature? <laughs> I believe Seth comes from that school of thought. <laughs> How very interesting. Look, you thought any more about our plan? Ah, your plan, dear boy. Your plan. I am merely the help, uh, not mercifully the arbiter of wisdom. What you are, dear boy, is the man whose life I've saved twice now. A man who sells lies and deceit to unwitting people. A man who, if he doesn't help me, I won't think twice about putting a bullet through his skull. Feeding to the vultures myself. Ah, uh, you see, Mr. Marston, you have the exterior of a violent man, but the soul of an angel, and that is what I think I cherish most about you. <laughs> uh huh. That's what I thought. Uh, <clears throat> but before we can attend to your particular problems, uh, um, oh, we need some extra lubricant to oil the machinery of business, and uh, this being America. <clears throat> That lubricant with which we concern ourselves is money. money. I've got money. What are you talking about? Oh, we need weapons. Armor plate for the wagon. Extra hands. And I need some danger money. So let's sell some more of these cures. Sell cures? Around here? Do you want to see me lynched? <laughs> no, the sport of kings. Racing, my friend. The sport of kings. A noble activity without reproach. Exactly the kind of activity where a lying, cheating, degenerate like myself can prosper. <laughs> I like that honesty. Let's finish the loading and we'll discuss it as we drive. <laughs> So now we get to see another activity that'll be unlocked to us. Now, sir, to Gap Tooth Breach. Oh, for once I'm not driving. Now, is there going to be some... Oh, Leroy's following us. Seth is an interesting fellow, is he not? I wouldn't say interesting. More deeply disturbed. I can see why you two get along. I see the good in everybody, John. It's a flaw of mine. I have a soft spot for life's flotsam and jetsam. The connection with him more like, you and Seth have a lot in common. You both rob people for one. Mind you, at least he waits until they're dead. Ah, oh, my dear boy. Nobody is more critical of drinkers than a drunk who's mended his ways. What are you talking about? Come on now, John. I've heard about you. You spent your life robbing people. It's a little inappropriate to be taking the moral high ground now. I had the courtesy to put a gun in their face. Whatever helps you sleep easily at night. We stole from those who had too much. We tried to give to those who had too little. A Robin Hood with spurs. Oh, romantic. You expect me to believe that poppycock? Maybe I'll have the good fortune to be able to leave my nefarious life behind one day and work on the government's dime. Don't talk about things you don't understand. Dear, oh dear, simmer down, my boy. You need to start appreciating your friends more. Folks around here don't see you as any different from Bill Williamson. I didn't think I'd have to huckster snake oil and dig up the dead, that's all. 
Take it from me, John. Collaboration is the key to success. I can help you. Seth can help you. It's business. Nothing more, nothing less. There's no need to make it quite so personal. Suits me. Looks like we're getting kind of close. Though that is a very interesting conversation because uh, Wes Dickens isn't exactly wrong in what he's saying. He just has an annoying way of saying it. We should be getting... I love the fact that Leroy's following us. That's so cool. Anyway, John, we must talk about the race. Yes, the race. Oh, come on. Time to purge that negativity and start thinking like a winner. You're going to have a whale of a time. They've been holding these chariot races in New Austin for as long as I can remember. And we need the money. Why aren't you racing then? I don't think that, uh... Oh! Oh no, not my thing at all. You have already proved yourself more than adept at the reins, my dear boy, and under some stress. These races are Byzantine in their ferocity, and the terrain is treacherous. People will do just about anything to win. Men die. It's a marvelous spectator sport. Sounds like fun. And you are my wild card, John. They won't be expecting you. So what's your role in all this? Think of me as your spiritual guy. Do I have to? You are a free man, of course. But I strongly recommend it. Imagine, just for today, you are not an aging bounty hunter, and I am not an avant-garde business pioneer. No, sir. Today, we are gladiators. Motivation, dear boy. I'm definitely feeling motivated to get the hell out of here. There you go. Just keep on using that as your shining star. Uh, Mr. Dickens would not make a good Obi-Wan Kenobi, though we are in the desert. And I believe the race is just up here. Nice night for it, though. Oh, the mines. Ugh. That'll come a little bit later. And here we are. Look at all those buckboards ready to go. Here we are, John. Gap tooth breach. Get on the cart to start the race. So it looks like he already has one uh, ready to go. That's a good boy there, Leroy. Loyal to the end. And of course we start out in last place. Can you count the three? I didn't hear one, two, three. So apparently we're a gladiator. Neat. Finish the race in first place. Well, we're here. Now it's time to uh, maintain our lead. And this isn't going to be like... Uh, Racing Bonnie McFarlane. These ones are going to be a little bit more aggressive. As long as we can make the turns here, we should be okay. And for some reason, with this buckboard, these horses actually have a better turning rate than um, I think Leroy would. Whoa, easy there. I do not want to fly off here into a ravine. You can hold down RB to move your cart backwards. That's nice, but we have no intention of going backwards. Only forwards. Unfortunately, the spectators here, they probably want to see a crash. And if they do, they're definitely not going to see it while we're passing by. Going right over the bridge. At least it's not narrow like the one during the Bonnie race. Actually, I think Bonnie would do really good uh, doing these races, though I don't think they would... Knowing the group here, they probably wouldn't let a woman race, unfortunately. They're lost, though. So far...
far so good. We're in one out of eight. And I think we've left the competition in the dust for sure. And we're going the right way. Let's uh, rest up our horse son. Been pretty heavy on the reins. I can actually race better at night than during the day because all of the brightness from the sun and whatnot can actually be a bit of a problem. So this looks good. Finish line is just ahead. And we have destroyed the competition here. I like it. Probably get some good coin out of that too. Hell of a race, mister. I'll take care of this cart for Mr. West Dickens. Fair enough. Come on, John. I suggest we be a haste. Now you didn't do anything. Right, best remove ourselves from the stage before somebody decides they want their money back. Bye by me. That's Isn't fair. That fantastic. The tears of the crowd, the thunder of the wheels, the falling rocks, homicidal maniac. Oh, come on, John. Even a cold-hearted misanthrope like you must have found that just the tiniest bit exhilarating. Not the friendliest bunch, are they? They take the racing very seriously in these parts, and your participation was not entirely pre-approved. That was clear. Looks like we beat all the bad the bad mojo though. We didn't see any falling rocks or homicidal maniacs. Guilty pleasures of mankind since the dawn of time. I'd get away from the men we just swindled before you start waxing too lyrical. Yes, yes, of course. Is Leroy still behind us? Nope. Maybe he found a nice horse today. Well done, sir. Well done. Having you as a ringer has netted us a fine profit. <laughs> we seem to be wasting time, old man. Oh, patience, my friend. The Trojan horse cannot run before it can walk, if you'll forgive the metaphor. Next, we need to procure some grand and overwhelming firepower. And for that, you need to contact an old friend of mine. Goes by the name of Irish. Irish. Yes, uh, he's an interesting kind of fellow, and he usually can be found in uh, Armadillo or some other town around here on some Bacchanalian revel or such. Uh, Great. An alcoholic arms dealer. What could be better? And off he goes. And we have another contact. Now, before we go talk to Irish, though, we need to finish our quest with uh, Seth, and we just got $3 out of that. You can meet Irish at the livery in Armadillo at Eye on Your Map. And look, we're here at that stranger quest that we missed before. I guess we need to go ahead and pay our respects here. And Leroy, you need to get off of those train tracks. What's wrong with you? I will not have my horse crushed by a train. There we go. Now, the name of this quest, I believe, was sure. Funny Man. Let's see what's so funny about it. My, my, take a look at you. Will you take a look at you? You look like you've seen trouble, mister. Enough for a hundred men. Trouble has a way of finding me, mister. Do I like the sound of that? Do I ever like the sound of that? Trouble with a capital T. That's just capital. Whatever you say. Cold, tough, but with a heart of gold. The cowboy sings his lonely song like, like a dog whose bone is made of wood. Excuse me? Oh, nothing. I, I was just writing my next piece. I've been sent out here to provide a little frontier joie de vivre for the ladies back east. I don't understand a word you're saying, mister. Yeah, my ma felt the same way. And now she wrote me out of her will, and there's no hope for any of us. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Saint, sir, at your disposal. But uh, please don't dispose of me just yet. <laughs> what are you doing out here, Jimmy? 
capturing the spirit of the West for a monthly back east. You know, I'm uh, sending them my oh so witty and oh so pertinent missives and gaining myself a little prize in the bargain. So it's action I'm after, and action I'm gonna find, too. <laughs> Wild men, cheap women, you know, guns, that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, he writes for the Penny fun. Dreadfuls. Fun? <laughs> I'm gonna have the time of my life, sport. I tell you, mister, the time of my little old life. <laughs> Funny Man Journal Entry Added. So that's an introduction to that character. We'll probably run into him a few more times as we go along. So let's check the map and see... We've got Wes Dickens over here in Plainview. And... I thought we had a Stranger Quest up here, but it looks like it's disappeared. It might only be during the day. I guess we need to go ahead and chat with Seth again at the chapel. And Irish is over here. And we also have the marshal to deal with as well. So let's head back. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything more. And that is a long ride. So let's go ahead and give Leroy a break. And since we have $400, we can go ahead and just take the stage. You the boss. <laughs> and where are we going? Waypoint, plain view... Ridgewood Farm, Armadillo. I'm going to Armadillo. You've got enough time. And since you don't seem to be nearly as talkative as Wes Dickens, I think I'm gonna get some shut eye, mister. go ahead and skip to the destination. We'll probably tip him for not being as talkative. Now, should we go ahead and go for the marshal or talk to Seth? Uh, we actually had the Marshall quest before the new Seth quest. I guess we need to go ahead and do that. I don't like doubling up on on the quest unless there's no other option. So let's go ahead and talk to the Marshall. Thank you, Muchly. Looks like a quiet night here in town. I assume at least. And the marshal is still a big letter, which means we don't have to wait for morning. Let's see what new trouble he's uh, dug up for us. Hanging Bonnie McFarlane. Uh-oh. This is a pretty big quest, if I remember. And technically digging up would be Seth's job, not the marshal's. I don't have a clue. All right, but it's got to be something to do with that government boy. We'll talk to him, find out what he knows. Fucking is. Where is she, Marston? <laughs> Who? Who? My daughter, you fucking scum. Where's Bonnie? I don't know. I haven't seen her since after the fire. Why? Why? Because she hadn't been seen since yesterday afternoon. You know, I don't think I can cope. If I lose another child... Now, Drew, <laughs> nobody's lost anything yet. I'm sure she's fine. Oh, Mr. Marshall! Mr. Marshall! Well, it's not a cannibal. Allegedly. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that be your next fucking mayor. Even better. Good day, Mr. McFarlane. Get down from that horse, boy, or I'll shoot. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, mister. Not if Drew McFarlane wants to see his bony back in one piece. Hey, Mr. McFarlane! It's a nice girl you got there. <laughs> Get down from there. You know, part of me's got the thinking I should just marry her myself. Give her a baby and that. What do you want? That's better. I want Norman Deke. I want him set free. Then you'll get your daughter back, mister. Oh, Williamson's lieutenant. We don't do deals with outlaws, boy. Yeah, you do. Let's not waste each other's time pretending otherwise. Oh, government themselves ain't much more than a bunch of crooks. This is the land of opportunity, mister. And I'm giving you the opportunity to get your daughter back before 15 friends of mine take out all their anger and their loneliness on her. Where the hell is she? Where is she, boy? Bring Deke up to Tumbleweed in a couple hours. And don't get no funny ideas, or I will slit that horse throat myself. You boys have a pleasant afternoon. 
Ooh, I'm gonna look forward to shooting him. What do we do? We do as he says. You and me, Marshal. Mr. McFarland, I'll get you your daughter back. I owe her that. Please do. Well, this is probably gonna be a long episode, guys. Because I remember this is a bit of a long and very hectic mission. But as I said before, at least it wasn't cannibals. Thank you, Jonah. Hurry up, boy. Let's go. Quick as you can, deputy. Make sure he's tied on good. Stay with me, Marston. I won't let anything happen to her, sir. And if so, we'll just reload. Literally and figuratively. Right. Let's go get Miss McFarland back. Follow the marshal. See, this is what happens when the Federals interfere in our affairs. Are you happy now? No, I ain't happy at all. And I already told you, I ain't with the government. Now you say that, John, but the only thing I know for sure is who sent you. They made me come here. They gave me no choice. That's your federal government, Mr. Johnson. They come down here dressed as cocky as the King of Diamonds, talking a lot of flannel about helping us, about spreading peace and civilization in the West, but they brought nothing but trouble and taxes. I agree with you. Wolves in sheep clothing, all of them. Rob you, then make you pay to have someone investigate the crime on your behalf. People around here have been fooled into feeling protected when they're worse off than they were before. The fellas I know don't care about people. All they care about is lining their pockets. Sounds a little bit familiar, though. Why is this sorry son of a bitch so important to them? Norman Deeks Williamson's right hand man. In other words, a glorified errand you boy. Wait, Marshal! I'll be back for you! Bill's standards have slipped. We already filled you with lead once, you ugly bastard. That's the kind of man who's mean enough to be second in command, but too cowardly and stupid to ever be a leader. Don't ever use that line near your deputies. You know, for his sake, they'd best not have laid a finger on Miss McFarland. Yeah, I figured John would be a little bit put out by that, as would I. What is this place we're headed? Tumbleweed, a lonely godforsaken place. Some people say it's haunted. It was quite a town back in its day. Then they built the railroad to Armadillo and went clean past Tumbleweed. And that was that. Pretty soon everybody had up and left. Now it's just thieves, smugglers, and bandits. Scum like Deke here. Oh, popular spot for lynchings, too. Let's try to avoid that if we can, Marshal. Yeah, lynchings in any respect, not particularly I wanted. I you're not taking advantage of the McFarland, Marston. They saved my life. Gave me food and bed when they had no idea who I was. I owe them more than I could ever repay. That's just they've been through a lot. Well, they're both vulnerable in different ways. I wouldn't have been running in and out of a burning barn to save their horses otherwise. Oh, I know you helped. Just like you helped me. But you got your reasons for doing it. It's no secret why I'm here, Marshal. I told you the very first time I walked into your office. I trust you. It's just all this business with Blackwater and Williamson and the past. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard not to have doubts. I understand. I never planned to be in the lawman business neither. Now I believe where we're going is on the other side of this train bridge. And as the marshal was saying, How it's a is ghost town. supposed to turn out? Sending an outlaw to do the work of a lawman. That's madness. Ain't much difference between the two, as far as I can tell. There have to be rules, Marston. Even you must understand that. It's easy to make up rules. But they ain't much use if people don't understand why. Like my son. If I tell him not to do something, he'll do it anyways, just to spite me. If I punish him, he resents me for it. But if I show him why it's wrong, at least he has reason not to do it again. That's nonsense. Without laws, we're nothing more than animals. Now look at Deke here. Go to hell! I actually do like John's uh, reasoning behind that, though. You gotta show them why something's wrong. It certainly doesn't hurt. Got some deer. Normally when you're on your way to these quests, you see all the yeah. stuff that you need. Well, maybe you're right about that. I'll kill all three of you myself, I swear! Looks Holy like he took some time to think about it. Oh, here we go. Like, don't knock me off the bridge there, Jonah. I know we haven't seen eye to eye. 
And is this going to be in the middle of the night? <laughs> John, you'll be exchanging the prisoner for Bonnie in the middle of town. Keep your eyes open. I sincerely doubt these scum plan to play fair. Fair my ass. You bet. Besides, Norm here is going to be my shield, ain't you, Norm? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. Marston, lead Deke into town. Make sure you keep a gun on that son of a bitch. Yeah, I want the repeater. I'm sure it's been nice for the boys to have a whore to play with. Move Norman Deke into town, as you can I hear see. those rancher girls like it in the rear. I really want to shoot you in the back Maybe of the head. she won't want to go home. Why don't you save some of that breath and breathe? Get these ropes off of me, boys! Wait, we're fun of you bastards. <laughs> Trusting son of a bitch, ain't you? Oh, okay, well, that escalated quickly. Oh, easy there, Marshall. And now it's doing a weird auto lock thing when I do uh, Dead Eye. I remember specifically. Oh, whoa, whoops, sorry. Fight your way to Bonnie. Alright, we will certainly attempt that with our uh, nice little Winchester. There we go. All of them are dead. We're going to do a lot of looting here. Before it's all said and done, I think. Now everyone, they're all like stealthed because of how dark it is. Hi. Oh, not good. Okay, hold on. We got stuff to do here. Where is she? Don't have time for this. Don't have time for you. Oh! Okay. Come on. Okay. Finish off the remaining outlaws. We shot the rope. Too easy, Is there someone right behind me? Hi there, guy. Ooh, you have a shotgun. Okay, well now that Bonnie's safe, we can take our time here. Whoa. Oh, you're up on the roof. I see. Destroy that fashionable hat you're wearing. We just shot Mad Dog Tannen. And John's not above shooting a man in the back. You could hold your breath for a while there, man. Good job. Bonnie, are you okay? I'm fine now, Mr. Marston. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're great. They're talking. Can't hear them, though. But it looks like we saved her, so that's what's important. Good deal. Got some fame out of that and probably a, some honor as well. I would imagine. Five dollars. Well, looks like we're going to make the money back from that, uh little stagecoach ride guys so I'm gonna finish I'm gonna finish uh, looting all the corpses here and we will see you next time hope you all have enjoyed it if you like the episode please leave a like down below subscribe to the channel leave a comment that'd be a big help and we'll see you next time later days everyone <laughs>